Hello, thanks for joining us here online at the University of Waterloo, our open house. Uh, my name is Paul Fiut. I was a longtime chair of system design engineer and now associate dean. I've been a professor in the department for many years. I guess a little bit about myself. My undergraduate, I did uh, co-op engineering here at Waterloo, so I know a lot about the co-op program and what it's like to be a student in it. Um, and in terms of system design, uh, I'm a big proponent. I think it has a huge sort of career opportunity and the, the combination of design skills and systems thinking uh, puts a student in a really powerful position in terms of being able to apply their engineering skills to a wide range of problems. So I invite you to join our presentation and learn more about systems design. So number one really is what is systems design engineering? So professors and students get asked that question a lot and really it's not that complicated and it's not that weird. So let's break it down a little bit. First of all, let's start off with what is engineering really? Engineering, the degree that a student would get at the end of uh, four and a half years of work uh, is a Bachelor of Applied Science. And basically that means we're applying science um, to do things to achieve a goal, whatever that might be, to design something, to analyze something. So engineers in general um, have a lot of math courses, a lot of science, uh, but then the goal of course is not just, just to learn the math and science, although that can be a lot of fun, um, it's actually do something with it. And on top of that, engineers have a particular responsibility um, towards the public in terms of ethics. Um, and so we take that very seriously. We can't just learn the science or just apply the science. In fact, we have um, a sort of higher duty or a call uh, to do so appropriately. So within then engineering, what is it that we do? Well, let's start off with design. Design is a systematic process to generate, specify and evaluate solutions to problems. Um, in fact, design is fun, uh, and design is a highly creative part of engineering. You could say that uh, all the math and science is kind of one half your brain, and then the design is kind of the creative other half of your brain that then has to take all of these things that you've learned um, and do something creative, something different, something unique with it. Uh, so design is kind of hard to teach because it's pretty creative, uh, but it's a lot of fun to do, and it's really, in many ways, the essence of engineering. Uh, if we, if you really had to sort of pin down and say what is engineering, ultimately it's either it's either design or creation, um, and that's what makes engineers engineers: a desire to be creative um, and to do something innovative with the tools at their disposal. All right, so then we get to the systems part. Now, in some ways, people think that this seems kind of mysterious or unusual. Number one, I'd like to assure you that the kind of courses that you, or if you're a parent, your children would be taking in system design, none of those courses are weird or unusual. Uh, if someone from another kind of branch of engineering were to sit in the courses, they'd all be nodding their heads saying, yes, I sort of recognize these things. It's more how we put it together um, and the overall ethos that we try to wrap around it that's a little bit more sort of creative or different. So a system is basically a bunch of interconnected elements. What does that mean? Well, there's a bunch of parts uh, each of which can be modeled or represented, um, and they influence each other. The part that makes systems kind of interesting is that, well, this kind of a model of inter interconnected pieces could equally apply to, say, a mechanical system with gears and pulleys, or a thermal system with heat and like hot and cold parts, or say, a biomedical system with a human body and different organs and tissues and bones and muscles. So, um, at some point, you could ask yourself, hmm, why are we studying all these things separately? Shouldn't we maybe be studying the mechanical, or not mechanical, maybe that we should be studying the sort of properties of systems. Um, and then once we understand that more in a kind of a high level, not quite abstract, but generalized fashion, uh, we could apply these concepts equally well in different domains. And in fact, that is the case. So that the the equations describing electrical circuits are, in certain circumstances, exactly the same equations describing thermal or heat flow. Um, in which case, why would we be teaching these twice? Doesn't make sense. So there we go. So systems thinking is about a slightly more generalized approach to representing and characterizing the behavior of interconnected components. All right, so then system design engineering basically is to use this kind of systems methodology um, in order to do better engineering design. Um, and that's what it's all about. So uh, in a nutshell, systems is how we view the world and design is how we change it. And I love that uh, because that really gets at the essence of what we're trying to do, or what we're about. Um, and I think that's quite exciting and offers just a lot of opportunities 
uh, for students. So um, what then is the kind of the actual experience like? How would students describe system design? Well, uh, the one thing that we have really benefited from for decades now uh, is there's a degree of community. And uh, I guess it's hard to put a finger on exactly why that would be, um, except that it's one of our biggest assets. So be maybe because systems are a little bit different, the students in systems have a slightly more sort of tight-knit community feel. Um, but there is definitely a cohort, a sense of belonging uh, that uh, one certainly couldn't say for you know every engineering program in Canada anyways. Um, and so, for example, class parties are up on the, you know, the blackboard on the side of the room and the student, you know, the classes have teams and team sports, intramurals and things like that. Uh, but the, to some extent, one difference is that a given cohort will have a dedicated classroom and the professor comes to them. And so the students kind of feel like they have their own community um, and the professors come and join the community as opposed to uh, students running around from class to class um, and just sort of trying to, you know, frantically sort of keep up with where they have to go. So um, what kinds of systems are we talking about? Well, that's all over the map. Uh, and so students end up, may end up doing really technical things. It could be multidisciplinary um, and sort of looking at a wide range of kind of problems. A lot of system students end up becoming sort of more program managers. Uh, lots of, uh, sorry, a lot of entrepreneurial startups coming out of engineering have come from system design. Um, overall, I'd like to think that the program offers uh, really the chance to transform you in terms of your technical skills and what you can do with them. So briefly, the program, this obviously this slide is too complicated and, and has too much busyness on it. So let's not worry about the details. Really what it's trying to get across is the multiplicity, the multifaceted aspect of the program. So green is designed. You can see that uh, we have designed every single term. Uh, that's been sort of the backbone of the program for quite some time now. Um, and it's really important to me because without that, uh, you know, what's left, a bunch of sort of courses, what brings them together. And so it's, it's that design. Uh, now, I also want to make sure that if you're a high school student listening to this, that you not be intimidated by that. That is, the number of green courses in design, you might think, well, I don't have much experience in design. Well, that's right, because we want you to get better at it. The point is not that you're arriving knowing how to do design. We want you to arrive having a passion for doing good science and math and engineering um, and wanting to do something with it. Um, so we obviously have to have a lot of design courses. They're fun, uh, but please don't be intimidated by it. So if we just look at the colors, we, you see there's a bunch of science, there's a bunch of math. Um, notice that there's actually only two required programming uh, sort of courses. That's, again, if for those students who are concerned that, oh, system design must mean software systems, it's clearly not the case. On the other hand, if you're the kind of student who really likes using computers, rest assured there are lots of technical electives um, in the computing area, and a lot of these other courses will use computers as a tool for solving problems. So um, where can this degree go? That is, you know, what do system design engineers do? Well, the answer is to some extent almost everything. Um, and so there's all kinds of options and electives that you can do. Uh, the list would go on and on, and I don't really want to belabor it, other than to say that one of the big strengths of the program, um, and so it's a poorly kept secret, but I, I, I'm a little bit baffled that more programs in Canada don't do this, is that we offer you almost arbitrary technical elective um, sort of flexibility. Um, and we do that by essentially tailoring every single student's curriculum um, how do we keep track of this? Basically, for accreditation purposes, you have to sort of do a certain amount of bean counting. And we do the bean counting for every single student individually, and that gives you much more flexibility uh, than if we had to sort of insist that all students sort of follow the same path. That doesn't sound like rocket science, um, and it isn't, uh, but we're the only program in Canada that does that. Uh, so that's what allows us to give you that kind of flexibility. If I were a student, that's what I'd be looking for. So, of course, a big part of a program also is co-op. I'm sure that's one of the, it has to be one of the reasons why you're strongly considering Waterloo Engineering. There are, it's, you know, the system design co-op is very much like that of the other programs. That is, we have six co-op terms, of which five are required, etc. cetera. Um, all of those details you don't really have to worry about. Um, fact is, it is a co-op program, and our students are, are 
really spectacularly successful in co-op. Uh, placement is super high uh, and placement of students after graduation is also. Um, and really what co-op offers, not just in system design, really in all of the engineering programs, um, it gives you the complementary set of skills that we know employers are looking for uh, because frankly they keep telling us um, you know, this is what we need in students and obviously the employers need certain technical skills, but the things that are often lacking are precisely the things you get better at when you do co-op. Um, and that's why Waterloo students are in such demand after graduation. Um, and so, like I said, there's loads of companies where students go. Uh, there's a few of them here that you'll recognize, uh, but of course with how many students we have in engineering, six or seven thousand going out every year. Um, that is uh, over all years, uh, about 1,500 graduating per year. Uh, there's a lot more companies than just the 20 or 30 shown here. All right, and so uh, some students will do entrepreneurial kinds of things, but really, again, if you don't think you're the, that you're the entrepreneurial type, please don't think that everyone at Waterloo is entrepreneurial. It's true that there's lots of startups and there's lots of opportunities with startups, uh, but if you're not the kind of person who thinks, hmm, I'm not sure I would do that, hey, you, there's loads of students come to Waterloo who want to do research or who want to do um, like sort of self-directed sort of creative projects um, and lots of people end up getting uh, really quite excellent jobs just because there's so many opportunities um, and so although we really support and value entrepreneurship we also support and value um, other sort of streams of success um, and so we would welcome everyone who's uh, you know strong at sort of physics math sciences and creative thinking uh, to be applying so since unfortunately you can't ask me questions in person um, and I can't sort of get your, um, you know, get your questions in front of me now in real time. So maybe I'll just kind of put up a few questions here and I'll run through a couple of points really quickly. So uh, kids have never lived, lived away from home. Uh, what's residence like? Well, um, the University of Waterloo does guarantee residence spots to all first year students. Uh, so the residences vary tremendously from fairly large to very small. Um, some have dedicated sort of live and learn kinds of communities. Um, but if you look at UW housing, you'll find a, a lot of information online. Um, and overall, it works out really well. And certainly I lived in residence and enjoyed it. And so that's, you know, that's great. Uh, is my son or daughter going to make friends? Absolutely. Particularly in system design. Like I said, I really emphasize the cohort community nature of the program. Um, we've done surveys uh, of the students, you know, in 4B when they're about to graduate. Um, and time and time again, sort of the strength of the classmate interaction and the degree of bonds between friends. And we see this with alumni events, like 20, 30 years later, a lot of the system students are still in contact with one another. Uh, how, how much free time do students have? Well, it is a fair bit of work, but it's also fun. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, what was the workload like in 1A? So we're tr we try to be pretty conscious. We understand that 1A involves a lot of transition, moving from home, um, you're living in a completely maybe different city, different environment. Um, and so 1A is not easy, but we work to get you through it. Uh, we are not interested in uh, admitting students and then having them not, not succeed. So we'd love for you to apply and we'd love for you to succeed. Um, and how does co-op really work? Well, it's a pretty intense process, but again, we really help you through it. We've got extra TAs who support you. We have people looking at resumes. Um, and so, uh, you know, don't worry, uh, you're all in it together and we make sure that all the students get the kind of help they need. And last class here, um, you know, my daughter is concerned about how she'll be fitting in. Well, uh, in system design, that shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, probably a third or more than a third of the students in the class are female. Uh, there are lots of female students in engineering, um, and particularly in system design, uh, they don't stand out at all in the sense that there's lots of them. Um, and so, uh, it's just, it's not a problem. There are lots of design groups that are female only. There are lots of design groups that are mixed. Um, and so, uh, and lots of the female students go on to have really quite successful, uh, both undergraduate experiences, leadership experience in undergraduate, um, and great careers afterwards. So uh, absolutely, they'll, uh, they'll be treated, treated great, um, and I'm sure they'll enjoy the program. So thanks a lot. And hopefully you'll take, you'll take a look at some of the other programs that we have to offer, but I think systems design is a pretty unique program, um, really enjoyable one, and one that sets you up for a wide variety of engineering-related opportunities as a career. So thanks. Take care.